This is something I've been thinking about for a long time, and I'm going to be unpopular here. <laughs> Keith said earlier, he said, I looked at your characters, like how your characters' backstories were for his game that he's doing, his, his Pathfinder game that will be coming soon on the channel called uh, Fist of Radon, that he is gaining inspiration from what we have been giving them about our characters, what we said about our characters' past, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of people, they want those backstories of a character like written so they can, like, a game master can riff off of that, right? Add elements, add side plots, maybe bake it into the main plot in some things. We as game masters some take that for granted. I want to challenge this notion. This is something I've been thinking about for a long time, and I'm going to be unpopular here. <laughs> unpopular. Well, especially as you were the one who was complaining to me about not including as much backstory as you wanted. <laughs> I'm going to be unpopular here. I'm going to say... That maybe, if you want to tell a really great story, that a player shouldn't be able to make their own background, should I say, but rather have to pick of a certain background so you can better integrate what that is into the story. Like, if you have the story, you can really tailor that story to these specific heroes and make it really personal to them and personalize and really work at that character growth that, like, a normal, like, a novel or a movie would have. If a player makes their own backstory, you're now kind of shoehorning that in. You're changing your stuff to suit it and it may it may be like a duplo block with a lego block it may not work all the time and a character's backstory may i mean you might have a, a character that is kind of your favorite because their backstory fits well with your with your story i mean i'm having that problem i'm having that problem right now with legend of the five rings where um narin's story is perfectly lining into what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I am now getting James, your character, his story's now building within the war within my campaign. This next adventure, I'm gonna be working on Tarek a little bit. I, I'm I got stuff lined up for him. I thought so. I thought so. I thought that was the order and that Crystal would be the one after that. I don't know what to do with Crystal. That's my thing. It's like she's been on the wayside, and I love her. She's my wife, <laughs> and I want to get her more involved. And like, I'm not finding that it's a Duplo block, and I have a Lego building. Maybe instead of letting players create their own backgrounds, you create the backgrounds, and then they get to choose from them. See. <sighs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Everybody, everybody's kind of sneered. Everybody's looked out, no, looked no, down no, on me. Is, and I get it. A, I understand. Like, t please, the, the, please tell the me. The hesitation that I think Keith and I are both having on that is the same hesitation of, well, if you're going to do that, then why not just go fully pre-gen characters? Yes. Um, so the way I look at it is um, I don't like super detailed backgrounds from players, but I do like an outline to kind of give an idea of what, where you're from. Um, mm -hmm. Like if you give me two paragraphs, I'd rather that than a 20 page back background. Um, I don't, I don't necessarily need to know your entire family history unless you figure it's going to actually be relevant. I don't need stuff like that. But if you say, Hey, was in the war. And then, uh, after, you know, I found that, uh, I, I needed to be a merc for a bit because I didn't really know anything but soldiering. Uh, and then I became this really good sniper because, you know, nobody could ever actually see me anyway. So, it, but then I kind of ran afoul of a couple of things and that's why I'm on this ship, you know, like I can, that's easier for me to work with and mm -hmm. I can throw a few other things. And then if, you know, later on you say, Hey, you know, I used to, this buddy that I worked with, uh, I can you know, go, oh, well, you know, maybe maybe we can do something with that later. I may say, you know, here's the setting. Here's what the, uh, the rough idea of where things are. Um, so build your backgrounds 
with that in mind, you know, then then you're not going to get somebody saying, well, I'm a Jedi. There's no Jedi here, though. But I'm a Jedi anyway. Uh, well, that's great. Um, that's the wrong game, you know, the wrong setting. Mm -hmm. So, like, you give it a framework and you say, or, or you say, hey, you know, like, uh, we're in a Napoleonic technology era. So your guy being this super genius ele electronics guy ain't going to work. But you could be a mechanics whiz that might have a little bit better uh, mechanical knowledge or chemical knowledge than is typical for er that era type of technology that we can work with. Full Metal Goblin is talking to us on the, in the chat. A good compromise might be telling kind of bits and pieces to your, of your plot to the players and then trying to find a place for them in it. And the example he gives is if you have like a big crime family, that's a main antagonist, then the players must all write something about how this crime family has wronged them or bumped into them or done something to them in the past, maybe tried to recruit them. Who knows? Like, but there has to be a connection there. Mm-hmm. 